What if every time you changed your password, your new password was instantly stolen and sent to a hacker? Turns out, on your Windows computer, that's pretty easy to do. Because password filters are a way for organizations to enforce stricter password requirements on Windows accounts than those that are available by default in the Active Directory group policy. And it's pretty well documented. This is a write-up and blog post from Mubix, or Rob Fuller, titled Stealing Passwords Every Time They Change. Now, granted, this is a very old blog post, and very old write-up, and very old technique, but it still works on modern Windows. Turns out, this password filters functionality basically lets you run any code you want whenever any user changes their password. So, what's to stop you from listening in in the middle and capturing that new password? That's exactly what he did for the National Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition way back in 2013. He created an evil password filter that basically installed itself, and any time a password changed, it would store the password change to a log file file in clear text, as well as issue a little HTTP post authentication to a server they own. So they could exfiltrate the password and see what those new sensitive credentials are. But let's go take a look at what these password filters really do based off the documentation. Now it's Pretty simple, it provides a way for you to implement a password policy and change notification. Whenever a password change request is made, the Local Security Authority, or LSA, calls the password filters registered on the system. Each password filter is called twice, interesting. First to validate the new password, and then after all filters have validated, to notify the filters that a change has been made. So basically, we could register a new notification if we listen in on some of the password filter functions that are defined here in the security management functions, the password filter function section are the ones that we're most interested in. The following password filter functions are implemented by custom password filter DLLs or dynamic link libraries to provide password filtering and the change notification. So these are the three functions that we'll need to sort of wrap around or recreate, right? Add our own functionality whenever a password has been changed. And when we wanna put this to use, we go ahead and install it on the endpoint. Here's the thing though. This is basically a backdoor. This is a sort of persistence mechanism. So that means you will need to already be an administrator or have compromised the machine to the point where you could set this up. We'll need to put a DLL or dynamic link library into C Windows System 32, like all the native and natural Windows binaries are installed to. And then we simply update the registry. But this is the H key local machine hive, which again requires administrator privileges. And then once you've got this all set up, you will need to reboot the machine. So keep in mind, this is a post exploitation technique. A little bit of persistence, bit of a backdoor. This is something after you've already gained admin capability on that host. And now maybe you wanna listen and lurk and capture and collect other credentials that might be used elsewhere across the network. And I'm here on the MITRE ATT&CK framework, and you can see some other hackers or threat actors have done this in the wild. So for this video, let's go ahead and do it. Let's try and create our own rogue malicious password filter that could steal passwords every time they are changed. Now, because we know we'll need to write a DLL or dynamic link library, I'm gonna open up Visual Studio so that I could create a new project. And let's look for how we could make a DLL or dynamic link library in Windows. I'll click next here and we could call this like test pass or whatever. Something for us to build out with a scratch pad. Now Visual Studio gives us the boilerplate sort of syntax and setup for a DLL, but truth be told, we really don't need that. We're actually going to sort of get in the middle of those other Win32 API functions. We're implementing them as exports so that our password filter and now notification provider could respond to those. Since we're gonna be working with the Windows API, we should include windows.h get the header file. And I think for our example, we can just write to a log. So let's get standard input and output for a header file as well. Now let's begin adding the functions that we need. But before we do, while we're chatting about passwords and Active Directory and how this could very well be used in a domain controller environment, let me take a quick second to tell you about the sponsor of today's video. 
Let's be honest, passwords are still a mess. Forgotten logins, weak credential reuse, reset tickets clogging up the help desk, it's a nightmare, and attackers know it. That's why I'm a fan of Spec Ops software. They take password security from reactive to proactive. With their breached password protection, you're blocking over 4 billion compromised passwords, updated daily from real-world leaks, live attacks, and even malware botnets. And it's not just password resets. Spec Ops actively scans your Active Directory environment and flags compromised passwords the same day they show up in the wild. You can even build custom block lists so users can't set passwords with your company name, project code names, or that one sports team that everyone's obsessed with in the office. And for the end users, they get dynamic feedback that helps them choose strong passwords that meet policy without the guessing game. Fewer bad passwords, fewer help desk tickets. Throw in self-service password reset in built-in multi-factor authentication, and suddenly, passwords aren't your weakest link anymore. They're just one more thing you've locked down smart. Check out Spec Ops software and get started with my link below in the video description. jh.live slash specops. Huge thanks to Spec Ops for sponsoring this video. All right, I did forget my using namespace standard and I think that might be helpful here. So let's make sure that's included. And then let's go review these password filter functions that we need to implement in our custom DLL. First one should be initialize change notify. And it looks like that's coming from the ntsecapi.h header file. So that might still be worth including for us because some of the other maybe parameters or arguments that will go to other functions would be worth having. Um, this looks different in that example than what I was expecting here, but I don't believe that takes any arguments. So let's try to run with that. And to reference this as some sort of export, I think we should be using the extern C decal spec thing so that knows this is an export and we'll make that a Boolean as that's what that is. But we do want our initialize change notify function here that takes no arguments. Void is fine inside the parentheses. And since this is the function that is called when, okay, it's initialized, it's not really going to be capturing or being in the middle of a password. So we just need to have this functionality implemented, like define this function, but it doesn't need to do anything. So we could just like return true, even though it is a Boolean, right? That should make sure it's going to return some true value. It succeeded, it worked, okay. Now password change notify is the real thing that we want to get in the middle of, but before we do, let's go take a quick look at password filter. Since that validates a new password based on password policy, let's go ahead and look at this. Oh, we should still import that ntsecapi.h header. Let me get that included. Now this is the password policy portion, right? This is the functionality in this callback or this function where you could test against the password or the value that's provided to see does it have however many certain special characters or whatever. But again, we really don't need to get in the middle of this. We can do that for the ladder function. This being a Boolean, we could just recreate this uh, and return true after the fact. But we should use a puny code string as the type in all of this. Now that this has parameters, it's worth knowing what these are. So let me paste this into our code and let's use the same sort of setup to declare this function as we did with the previous. Uh, we can remove Move the extra boolean there and that should just be called password filter right and we don't need these in setup that's an artifact from copying it from the documentation but that's a good way to know what arguments we would need but remember this doesn't need to do anything we can return true on this one and then the next function is where the real magic will happen so let's look at this last one here, password change notify. And I think we could, again, just use this setup and structure for the function declaration. This is the notification section. And we can see in the parameters, again, more information about what username has been set with a new password. So let's paste those in and change these up. This should be a password change notify function, and that should return an NT status. And let's use the same setup here, make this an export. And I do still wanna use standard call in between that. 
Okay, now we need to actually define the function itself. And if we are just wanting to write to a file to log this for our playground understanding, of course you could make this forward it out over HTTP or exfiltrate or send the password and credentials however you wanted. But let's just simply start with a file. Let's try to open that file. And that takes a file stream as like a pointer with the ampersand here so you get the raw value. We'll need a location as to where we wanna put this on the file system. We can just call this logfile.txt and let's write it in append mode. So if it could not open that file, if f is equal to null, then we'll just kind of bail out, return true but otherwise we should write to this file. So we could f print f to put data there using our file handler and then what we want to add in. We know we're gonna be working with strings here, but they are wide strings because it's Windows world. And we could go ahead and add in the wide string and another wide string that follows. And if we're in the Windows world, I guess backslash R for a carriage return is also worthwhile. And then we could just get the username since that's included as an argument and it is a pointer, P Unicode string. So let's use the kind of arrow syntax rather than using the actual dot syntax to get a property out of it. Let's use the buffer value. So we get the real constant thing there alongside of the new password. There we go. With that, we have written or at least logged and stolen whatever password was set. And let's close our file. Then at the end of this function, let's be sure to like return zero, we're good, we're done. Now I don't see any errors and this is about maybe 37 or like less than 40 lines of C code that was fine. Just wrapping around the functions that are necessary to be implemented and exported for this DLL notification provider with LSA. So let's try to compile this. I'm gonna set this in release mode, uh, 64 bit is fine for the computer that I'm on. So let me click build solution and and fingers crossed, we get it to work. Okay, it's built with testpass.dll. Uh, actually, I did miss something super important. Uh, this string here where we're using an absolute file path, using the backslashes for like a Windows file path, uh, we will need to escape our backslash because that's normally considered an escape character on its own. To have a literal backslash, we do need to have two of these here and let's make sure to compile and use that one. So I'm gonna open up a terminal now and I will run this as administrator, right? Let me hit control shift enter. So I have a UAC prompt and because I am backdooring or applying this little trick to the machine I'm using, let me move into the directory that we had that built in. There it is. And we know we need to put this into system 32, but we know we're also going to be making changes to the registry. And that probably already has some data there for the regular normal notification providers that LSA uses. So let's get to HK local machine. Looking back at the documentation to install and register that, it does need to be in system, current control set, control LSA. System, current control set, control. LSA. Okay. So take a look. We have a notification packages key here or a value set with the type reg multi SZ with the default value of SCECLI. So I could double click and modify this, but if that's already a DLL hiding in C Windows System 32, uh, could we maybe tamper or get a little bit clever as to how we hide our new rogue DLL? Like we know right now ours is called testpass.dll and if it were like evil password proxy filter, that would probably, you know, just be sticking out like a sore thumb. So what if we tried to hide this in a clever way where we were to copy this test DLL file into C Windows System 32, but I actually want to call it something a little bit neat. S-C-E-C-I. I dot DLL, and you might be able to see it there, right? <laughs> Not a lowercase L, but a capital I, so that in a serif font, excuse me, a sans font, as you can see our registry explorer working here, this won't look all that shady once we've made the changes here to add in S-C-E-C -E -C capital I, I looks almost the same as the other one, but now that is our rogue and malicious little trick here. 
This will whine about some of the empty strings that it found if you're making this change manually, but if you double click, you will still see this value provided here. So with that done, and with that DLL that we've just created now put into C Windows System 32 in that directory, let's look for SCECLI, take a look. <laughs> Can you tell the difference? Kind of hard to see. Obviously the date modified gives it away, but. Now our code should go ahead and log new passwords to the C drive log file dot text file that we specified. It doesn't exist right now because we haven't rebooted yet and the changes haven't been made and we haven't tried to change a password, but let's reboot and let's see this in action. Let me go ahead and restart, restart anyway. All right, now let me log in as a separate user. Let's just log in as John with the password that he has set for the moment. And now that I am logged in, we could go explore in the root of our file system here, the C drive. Remember our log file.txt that we're looking for is only told to be created and written to when we have a new password being changed. So let's try to change our password. Well, you could do this with the net user command. You could do this in some other way. Obviously any of the methods that are really still gonna be hooked into, we can change our password by the GUI, by whatever method, and let's use a fun one for our new password. Password hint can be LOL, let's click next and finish. And now when I go ahead and take a look at our C drive, we have our log file. Log file.txt has been created and you can see the password that I set. And we just stole that clear text, plain text password as it was being changed. Bit of an odd Unicode or some strange character at the end here, we could see this is pretty well clear, the plain text password though. That could have been anything. And if we look back at the blog post from Mubix or Rob Fuller, again, that was written way back in 2013. It says, this works from Windows 2000 XP all the way up to Windows 8 in 2012. Granted, I'm testing this on Windows 11 now in 2025, uh, probably still kicking around. While it's an old technique, it does work. And let me say, uh, I don't know if I actually drew attention to this, but like Windows Defender virus and threat detection is still on. Uh, I could go ahead and go take a look at all this. Real-time protection's on, cloud deliver protection's on. We can turn on automatic sample submission if you all want. Granted, we didn't do anything malicious. We wrote to a text file, again, using the native and real functionality of a password filter. Uh, but the registry tweak, all the things that we did and that living in system 32, totally a-okay. To your point though, you may very well be asking, okay, well, how often are local passwords changed? Maybe not often, maybe often enough, maybe still something that could glean and glisten some new information if you're doing some long-term, I don't know, threat emulation. And when this is put on a domain controller inside of an active directory environment, every time a password is changed by that domain controller, it's gonna be verified by the password filters. So if this is sitting there, listening in, set up as some post exploitation, set up as a little bit of a persistence or another trap, you could still be capturing those credentials. So there's another trick for your toolkit, another technique maybe, old but gold, right? Way back from 2013, but still some other trickery you could do with passwords on Windows. Stealing a password every time it changes. And all it takes is just one file on the file system and one change to the registry, and you can get a little bit sneaky there. So hey, thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all those YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, subscribe, and please do give some love to our sponsors. Link below in the video description. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.